It's Friday, December 10th, 2010, and welcome to This Week in Linux News. Several times over the last month, we've talked about Open Connect, the open source driver for the Microsoft Connect device. Well, a company called PrimeSense, the company that is behind the technology that created the Connect, has come together with a company called Willow Garage, who are into robotics, and another company called Sidekick, who are into motion control games, to create a new project called OpenNI.org. OpenNI.org is a not-for-profit, industry-led organization designed to promote natural interaction, applications, frameworks, and development. Well, from this organization has come the OpenNI framework, which is an API for interacting with OpenNI-compliant devices, such as the Microsoft Connect. Along with that, they provided a driver to work with OpenNI-compliant devices that works on Windows and Ubuntu. So what does this mean for the OpenConnect project? Probably not a lot, but for the people that were using it, now they've got a lot more at their disposal for making these new applications, for making new games, for making new interfaces to interact with. Let's keep things rolling and talk about some distro releases. This week, Jolly Cloud version 1.1 released. If you haven't seen it already, I made a video showing off some of the new features on my main channel here. I'll have an annotation and a link in the source code below if you'd like to check that out. In addition, Crunchbang Linux put out a release candidate for version 10, with mainly some updated packages and some new artwork to help reflect their new website. And finally, Unity Linux 2010.2 is available. This comes with more packages, updated packages, and proprietary NVIDIA and ATI drivers out of the box. By the way, if you're not familiar with Unity Linux, it is based on Mandriva Linux, and the goal is to take Unity and make your own distro out of it so you can have your own custom interface. And since we're talking about all these different distros, what are you going to test them on? Probably VirtualBox. Well, VirtualBox 4.0 Beta 1 and 2 released this week. Along with these beta releases come a ton of new features, such as a new file layout for your virtual machine's disks and settings. This helps add portability to all of your virtual machines, so you can very easily pick it up and move it to another host machine. They've added Intel HD audio support, so you shouldn't have to emulate a sound card anymore if you've got Intel HD audio. They've added support for limiting the virtual machine's CPU time and the I.O. bandwidth that you're using up. And one feature that I'm really excited about, they've added support for resizing virtual hard disk images. If you would like to try out this new beta, I will have a link to it in the source code below. Keeping things rolling, a couple of months ago we talked about the Humble Indie Game Bundle. This was a package of games that you could pay whatever you wanted for and get it for whatever platform you wanted. Well, if you go to the Humble Indie Bundle site now, they've got a little hint that there's going to be a Humble Indie Bundle 2 coming. They've also added a little section where you can register to receive email updates when the Humble Bundle becomes available. There is no information though on when that's going to happen or what games are going to be involved. However, after the last Humble Indie Bundle where a bunch of the games ended up going open source, this is a wonderful thing for the open source community. All right, let's move on to some Ubuntu news. In the comment thread of a bug report on Launchpad, Mark Shuttleworth has said that the new Unity launcher is not going to be movable like we thought it was going to be. He says that it is fixed by design. They want to keep it as close to the Ubuntu logo, the Ubuntu button, the launcher as possible. However, there is always the option to auto hide it. And if you want to, you can use any one of another hundred docs like Avant Window Navigator, Docky, Cairo Doc, things like that. In addition, there's a new item that's been added to the Ubuntu Software Center. It is Illumination Software Creator, created by Brian Lunduke of Jupiter Broadcasting. By the way, if you're not familiar with Jupiter Broadcasting, they have a load of different shows, but the one in particular you might be interested in is called the Linux Action Show. It is a weekly Linux news show that runs for about an hour. You can watch it live, or you can see it here on YouTube, youtube.com slash jupiterbroadcasting. And the last bit of Ubuntu news I'd like to talk about, there's a new team out there for Ubuntu called the Ubuntu Adverts Team. The goal of this team is to create new advertisements for Ubuntu to help promote it, to help get it out there in the mainstream just a little bit more. If you're interested in participating in this, if you're a graphics designer, if you're a musician, if you're a video editor, anything like that, and you want to be able to contribute to it, there's a Launchpad team that you can join. They're having two IRC meetings this weekend on Freenode in the Pound Ubuntu Adverts channel if you'd like to come and hang out. I've gone ahead and thrown my hat into the ring. I'm going to see if I can help out with maybe a little video editing along the way. And let's wrap things up with a boatload of Google news. This week, Google announced the Google Chrome Web App Store is open. As far as I can tell, it's entirely comprised of HTML5 based applications and links to other websites. However, some of the apps are free, some of the apps are paid, and the App Store itself is only usable in Chrome or Chromium browsers. So if you're using Google Chrome, Chromium, or even Chrome OS, you should be good to go. 
And speaking of Chrome OS, it was announced this week that they're going to be putting out a Chrome OS notebook. The code name for that is CR48, and it is a 12.1 inch notebook with a full size keyboard, a full size trackpad, an eight hour battery life while using it, an eight day standby time. It comes with built in 3G wireless through Verizon, and it's going to be available for purchase in the first half of 2011. However, if you go to google.com slash Chrome OS, they have a pilot program that you can sign up for. I believe the signups opened on Tuesday, and a lot of tech reviewers have already started receiving their CR48s. I signed up on Wednesday and I haven't seen or heard a thing, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. However, speaking of that CR48 notebook, one of my first questions was, if I get it, can I put something else on it? Well, Google's VP of Product Development has said, no, you can't. Basically, any Chrome OS-based device is going to be set up in such a way that you cannot load any other operating system on it. Presumably, this is due to some sort of read-only memory, and of course, it's still probably going to be technically possible to do it. They're just saying that it's not going to be. And with all these other announcements Google was making, they went ahead and announced that Android version 2.3 Gingerbread is now available with the SDK. The first lead device that Google has announced along with that is the Nexus S. This is made by Samsung and it's going to be available on T-Mobile. It comes with a 4-inch display, a 1 GHz Hummingbird processor, front and rear facing cameras, 16 GB of built-in storage, and a near-field communication chip, just like we were discussing a couple of weeks ago. This should be available for purchase from T-Mobile on December 16th in the US and from other places unlocked and on December 20th in the UK. And finally, while they were announcing all of these things and demonstrating all these new things, Andy Rubin, the VP of Engineering at Google, demonstrated the Motorola Everest 10-inch tablet. It is ultra thin, it is ultra light, it's running Android 3.0 Honeycomb. It's supposed to have an NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor in it, a 2 megapixel front facing camera, a 5 megapixel rear facing camera, 32 gigabytes of built-in storage with an SD card expansion slot, and LTE compatible. By the way, the LTE would be Verizon's new 4G network that they just opened up on the 5th of December. The device is slated to come out sometime in 2011, but the prototype he was showing off was valued at about $10,000 right now. But that's all I've got for you today. I will be putting out a review this weekend of the Barnes & Noble Nook Color. A coworker has one and brought it in to let me try it out for a little while. But thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend, and I will see you next time.